This video is sponsored by PDF Element. These past months, I've been following a transferring process in my university and there has been a lot of documentations I've had to read and fill, a lot of papers that I've had to sign, and I've used PDF Element for absolutely all of them, so I'm more than glad and excited to talk to you about the new update that PDF Element is receiving while I also share my personal experience with every feature. I'm going to be using the latest version at the time of this video being recorded, which is version 8. And this version has all the features you had with PDF Element 7, which we're going to discuss in just a second, and it obviously also has some new implementations. The first one, and personally the one that I literally appreciate the most, is that now the startup time is three times faster, and not only for when you open any file, but also for when you're converting and editing any PDF. The difference is pretty noticeable. I think the biggest drawback it previously had was the fact that you had to wait a significant amount of time to open even small files. But now, as you're seeing, everything is way faster, and in my experience, there are some files that are even opened four times faster. Once you have any file open, the entire user interface is a lot cleaner, smoother, and again faster for when you're editing your files. For me, PDF Element really comes handy for when I have to either create a PDF because the OCR technology works really good, so I generally use it to be able to search through the text of the images I have, and I also use it to edit files that I only have as PDFs. I think I mentioned this in a previous video, but up to this date, I I've had to edit two resumes of which I did not have the editable file. The first time, I edited the file on the Tab S6, which I totally recommend downloading the app if you don't have it already. It's completely free and it can definitely save you if you ever need to edit the content or pages of a PDF or if you ever need to merge any files. And the second time was recently and I used the desktop version. And the good thing is that when you finish editing the PDF, you can export them as Word files, PowerPoint presentations, Excel, images or a few other types of files. You can also optimize the PDF. I recently had to email a group homework PDF which was around 12 megabytes and this was really useful because it lets you choose how much you want to optimize it so that you can still conserve some of the details in the pages. In the toolbar, the comment section lets you highlight, underline, and strike out any text. You can add different shapes, notes, text boxes, attachments, and annotations which obviously work a lot better if you have a stylus to write on your screen. When you go to the edit section, you're able to completely edit and customize every single piece of text in your PDF. You can move it, you can change its font, size, color, indentation, alignment, and many other different things. In here, you can add images, links, watermarks, and you can also include or edit the header and footage of the file. If you go to the form section, which is one of my favorites, to be honest, you can select many different tools to create the digital survey or form you're looking for. You have text boxes, check boxes, drop down menus, list, push buttons, images, and you can add a place for digital signatures. If you right click any of these objects and select properties, you can customize their appearance, the options for when you want people to select something from a list, and you can have actions for when the user interacts with the object for which you can select if there's something specific you want the object to do. When you have filled one of these forms, you can make use of the data abstraction tools to collect the information of the PDF, or if you're creating the form and you want to send it as a PDF, you can protect it with passwords, and you can even select some specific things for what you want the password to protect. Finally, as you could expect from a PDF editor, if you go to the last option, Option in the toolbar, you're able to see all the pages on the PDF and move them around, delete the ones you don't need, rotate, split them, insert new ones, and you can extract one or many of these pages to create a separate PDF. That basically sums up most of the features of PDF Element. If you like it, you can use the trial version for free. You can ask me any questions about it in the comment section, and if you like it, you can purchase one of the premium versions. I genuinely like the software, I use it very often, it's my default PDF reader, but I think it shines the most when you're trying to edit PDF. PDFs. It also integrates with your Office app, so you're going to have a tab in Word or Excel that says PDF element that's going to facilitate the creation of the PDF or if you want to email it to someone. They're having some discounts which you can find in the description, and if you don't find it, you can always look for the student discount, which I honestly appreciate companies having them. Next video is one that I'm really excited about. I've been preparing it for quite a while now, so make sure you're subscribed to get notified. Also, thank you very, very much for 5,000 subs. It's kind of crazy to say it out loud. I'm preparing interesting videos for next month and the start of next year, so I'm more than glad that many people are joining. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and for now, this has been a regular teenager. Take care. Pux. Oh, I say totally twice.